Stanley Cup Finals, Tampa Bay Lightning, Montreal Canadiens, we've got your Game 1 Summary, coming up. Right, Paul. Well, there's lots of lots of actions. Just a ton of things to talk about tonight. Uh, uh, but I just want to start with uh, that awful uh, uh, incident right near the end. Uh, Brendan Gallagher. Um, I, and I need to say to our viewers that we are shooting this like what is it, Paul? Like we're about 15 minutes after the end of the game. Uh, so 15, yeah. I don't actually know. We, we don't know right now. I think Brendan Gallagher came back out from the dress dressing room, so I, I think he's probably not too seriously injured. But I mean, things looked gruesome when he came when when he was first going off the ice. There, I hope he's okay. Um, that hit was was that. I mean, I, I don't think. And Paul, I, I really want your take on this one. You know, I, now Coleman came out. He got the penalty. He kind of pulled pulled the helmet off there. Uh, but when Sergachev, I think it was Sergachev, uh, who actually went down with Gallagher to the ice, and that was, I, I didn't see intent to injure in the way they went down. The question was, is there intent to injure by the fact that Coleman sort of pulled the helmet off? What are your thoughts on all that, Paul? I don't think it's an intent to injure, but I still think there has to be some repercussions for, for doing that. First of all, Sergachev's about twice the size of uh Gallagher so it's not an even match up there and Gallagher brings a lot of this on himself but when's the league gonna say enough's enough with with this scrum and in this nonsense that goes on again I go back to things like world junior hockey which is the best hockey in the world to watch and you just don't see this nonsense they don't need it this is not part of the game going forward if the game is going to succeed moving forward it doesn't involve smashing each other in the head and I am so sick of seeing it. And people are going to say, oh, you're a bleeding heart. No, I just, I know enough about brain injuries to say, this is going to affect this kid somewhere down the road. All these wax to the head and, oh, he played a tough game. Yeah, he was a hockey player's hockey player. No, it's, we're, we're past that. We need to move on beyond that. Yeah, totally agree. It's just, it's not worth it. You're, you're, you're absolutely right on that. Um, right, and, and Sergeyev didn't mean to obviously you don't intend to go down and drive a guy. You just get into this wrestling match. But still, you have to be, you have to know where you are in space. You have to know that he has no helmet on. And you should know that there's going to be ramifications from what your actions are. I mean, if you did that in society and you injure somebody, you're going to be held accountable. So why don't we let this go on the ice? Yeah. I can see the comments okay. section filling up now, and we'll get a bunch of negative <laughs> feedback on that. Saying, but, even I don't care. Saying, That's my view. <laughs> um, no, no. I, I and 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 you know, you and I have some points of debate, but this is something you and I will not be arguing about. We totally, totally see eye to eye on this, and uh, um, no question at all. I just want to say that this is not a because I, I like the Montreal Canadiens issue. I don't like any players getting hit in the head. I just don't think it. There's any place for it again. If it had been Sergachev that had been injured on the play, I, I'm against that too. I, I just think it's bad for the game. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Um, and I do again just want to say that we're saying all of this, having this conversation in the context of not really knowing whether Gallagher is, exactly. is actually okay. I mean, uh, even if he did come back out from the dressing room and onto the bench, I don't think uh, Paul did he uh, did you see him come back out on the ice? I don't think he made it back out to the ice, did he? I didn't see it. No, no, I didn't see it. No, and and just the way that you know the way that he was bleeding from his scalp after. I mean, he had a it was a flat impact on the, the his head on the ice. Uh, that uh, you know, I don't see how that's not a, a serious injury that might be potentially impacting his ability to play in the rest of the series, or you know, or even a more serious injury than that long term. I hope not. I sure hope not. But uh, um, anyway, okay. So moving into the game itself, in terms of the rest of the the action of the game. Um, all right, so Tampa Tampa had the weapons out. Uh, I think he had goals yeah. by uh, by Cernak, Chernak uh, here pronounced both ways. I don't know what what's actually the the correct way. Chernak. Okay, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Dangle was calling it one way, and uh, the the uh, announcers in the background were calling it another way. <laughs> all right, so we had 
So we had goals by Chernak, uh, Gord, a couple by Kucherov, Stamkos. I mean, all the weapons that you and I were talking about in the preview video, uh, you know, before the finals. Um, the, you know, the the firing, the weaponry was just coming from everywhere. Uh, and by the way, I just want to say, Paul, about that preview video, I noticed that there were actually about 20 people who were watching the preview while today's game was playing. Now, fans, uh, our folks out there, I really appreciate if you're fans of the channel and uh, and you're dedicated to watching our preview video. But come on, watching the preview video during the actual game you know, you can pause the video and then watch the uh, the game because that's actually the, the the main action there. But still, we appreciate the viewership. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, come back to the uh, uh, to me tonight, Paul. I think two things were established. This is this is my my take on tonight's game. Uh, the 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 two takeaways are the following. We know who the stronger team was. The the better team prevailed on the ice. They are the more talented team. They are the deeper team. We said it before the series. We were right. Everybody was right about that. But the second takeaway in my mind is I don't think the score sheet that the 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 final count up on the scoreboard was as was a, an accurate reflection of the balance of power on the ice. I think Montreal was a lot closer in this game than what five one would suggest. I think that Montreal showed in this game that they do have the potential to pull off, to still have the potential to pull off an upset in this series. Uh, and and I, I think that, you know, this game might even give them a little inspiration. What do you think, Paul? Well, I think, first of all, we might need to go back and reshoot the preview video because uh, we got embarrassed on that. Uh, <laughs> I thought Montreal was awful tonight. I thought they were flat. I thought they got run around like they were at the end of the regular season. Uh, as soon as Tampa got those couple early goals, they, they became deflated, which has not been their calling card up to this point. Uh, they got lucky on the goal they scored. Price held them in. It, this should have been a lot worse. Um, true. That's true. I don't know. Yeah. They better They better figure things out quickly or it's going to get ugly for them. I'll tell you, you, you mentioned them getting lucky on the, on the Ben Sherratt goal. Yeah, sort of. I mean, it took a couple deflections and, and you know, it went their way. Uh, but if you look at the play that led up to him even having the, the, the opportunity to take that shot from the blue line, Montreal had set up a sequence. They were, they were controlling the puck in Tampa's end. Tampa started to, to clear the zone. But Montreal regained control. They were persistent in the play. They regained control, got the puck over to Sherratt, and he took that blistering shot, got the goal. So I actually liked what I saw in that play, not because of the luck or lack of luck on the actual shot, but just because Montreal had, had showed a persistence to not basically, even when they were down in the game already and even in a, in a, a setup that had been busted, if you will, by, by Tampa's defenders, they still turned around and they persisted and got the goal. I thought at least for about 40 minutes of the game. The first couple periods, I thought Montreal played a pretty even game. Maybe in that last period, they let it get away. <laughs> well, there was there was a bunch of uh, defensive zone uh, lapses. The one with Stamkos wide open off to the side of the net that Carey Price came in and, and saved the day. The Montreal's first line was terrible. You know I'm a big Co Cole Caulfield fan, but he was, he was not good tonight. Uh, the first goal... Sure, he made a, a turnover in, inside the offensive, and I'm not so much upset with that, but the, the lack of effort on the back check was what bothered me. Chernak, he should have picked him up. There's no way Chernak should have blasted towards the net like he did. I. It was a, a, a terrible play on his part, and I think that line was about minus three tonight, so they, they just weren't good. Now, what they are matching up with some of the best players in the world. Let's face it, you're going to have a bunch of Hall of Famers on this team uh, in Tampa when it's all said and done. Uh, that power play at the end when Kucherov uh, set up Stamkos, you got four four guaranteed Hall of Famers on that power play. Do you make changes if you're Montreal going into next game? What do you think? A few. Uh, I didn't like Eric Gustafson's game tonight uh, on defense. I would put in a guy like Alexander Romanov. If you're going to get wailed on, you might as well put your young guys in and give them some experience. Uh, it couldn't be any worse than Gustafson. Or Gustafson, I'm sorry. 
Um, I would also, I'd take out Jake Evans. I didn't think he was very effective tonight either. I think he was just filler for Joel Armia tonight. Montreal's also got a problem with scoring, so I don't know if you, you find a place to put Tom, Thomas Tatar in. I'm not sure if he's injured. I think he's just been a healthy scratch. Uh, you got to do something because they got to find goals somewhere and they got to find them quick. And speaking of needing to find goals somewhere quick, um, I, you know, I think one now uh, overall, I'm going to say I don't think Montreal should make big changes. Maybe a couple of the the tweaks, the lineup tweaks you're talking about, but in terms of like. Uh, shuffling lines or anything more dramatic in the mechanics of the play. I know some people are going to say, hey, look, you got beaten 5-1. You, you got to do something different if you're going to lose the finals. Um, I don't think, again, I don't think this was as lopsided as the score is suggesting, and I would not actually make major changes in terms of the, the actual structure of the of the lineups and, and the time on ice and, and so on. Um, I think those pieces stay generally the same. However, I would have a little quiet pep talk with Mr. Cole Caulfield <laughs> and trying to get, get his fire back and trying to get him to, to pull out the guns and, and shooting on the net for the next game because uh, he seemed a little lackluster tonight, do you think? Well, I'm not sure if it was the case of he was lackluster. They were just, the Tampa defense was so mm. good. They just tightened everything up and they... No wonder Vasilevsky looks so good. They, you don't get any scoring opportunities on him. Uh, yeah, I, lots, lots of words. Yeah. Well, that's that's a, a rare state of affairs <laughs> for the case. <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> you know, Tampa got a bunch of bounces tonight, but they made their own bounces. They made it so they got the bounces. Uh, they were making smart plays. They were always a step ahead when they were going for, for pucks. They played a structured game that Montreal seemed to lose after they got behind. I think Montreal tightens things up. Uh, they can win a game or two here. Let's face it, the first game of the um, Vegas series, they got shellacked pretty good and they looked like they weren't, they were in over their heads. So maybe the same is true here. Maybe they just needed a wake-up call. All right, that's a great transition into our the final part of this video for our predictions for the coming game. Paul, where are you going to think uh, is going to, what's going to happen in game two? Well, I think Montreal will be better next game. I think getting that fifth goal was running up the score a bit, and Montreal guys were a little bit frustrated. I still think, for some reason, Montreal's not very good in Tampa. I think they're going to lose this next game 2-1. Okay, well, I'm going to go out on a limb. Uh, I I still sit. Well, that's I still, something new. Yeah. <laughs> well, you you have previously accused me of fence sitting. In fact, I think in that's the true. the preview video to the finals, you accused me of fence sitting. I am not going to fence sit on this one. I'm going to say I still think that Tampa is the stronger team. I still think eventually they're going to prevail in this finals. Uh, but I think the the following game it will be kind of uh, you know episode five of or episode four of uh, what was it? No, it was no episode five of Star Wars: uh, The Empire Strikes Back. I think this will be the Empire Strikes Back. I think Montreal is going to win and win decisively. I think the, this uh, coming game will be Montreal 5, Tampa Bay 2. So are you saying that Montreal are the bad guys? Oh, is that who the Empire was in that? Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the comments blowing up now. Oh, they're, they're going that way already. That, uh, yeah, that, same, that was same. no change. <laughs> okay, so uh, any final thoughts before we sign off for tonight, Paul? No, I still think Montreal, you know, it's only one game. So Montreal can get back in this, but they have to tighten things up and play the type of style that has gotten them here so far. And they need to find some secondary scoring. Uh, that's going to be the biggest task. And I think with our preview video, we didn't put enough emphasis on on primary and secondary scoring because that is going to play huge because Tampa's so deep. They've got four lines that can that can hurt you. Montreal's got one, maybe two if, if they're on. We also got some comments, uh, a couple of people comment in the feedback about uh, us not including much conversation about special teams uh, and the power play and the penalty kill. Um, what did you think of what you saw there tonight? Well, Montreal's power play wasn't, 
well, was it a case of it wasn't very good? The whole team wasn't very good tonight. So was it their power play wasn't very good or just that the other team was better? Probably the latter. Uh, their penalty kill was was decent, except for the Stamkos goal. I, I, I liked what I saw. There was a, a stretch where it was 4-4, four and four, and uh, I thought they you know, were playing pretty pretty effectively for a period of time there. All right, thanks everyone for watching. This is a wrap for game one. Uh, be sure to uh, check out our website. We'll put a link to the website in the description below, and uh, we'll be here for game number two coming up soon. Good night, folks. Take care, guys.